When I first saw the media centre at Lords, I was just gobsmacked. I mean, it's almost a spiritual place for any cricket fan and steeped in tradition. So I couldn't believe that they'd built one of the most futuristic buildings in the country. And what's more, that these plans were actually passed by the MCC, a club which has only recently let women in. It's one of the most traditional clubs in the world. Well, I was actually one of the first people allowed into the building. Uh, I've got a show on Radio 5 Live, which is a kind of like the kid brother of Test Match Special. And they let me into the media centre pretty much just as it was being finished off. Literally, the paint was still going on. Now, technically, this isn't a building at all. It is, in fact, a boat. It's made of aluminium and was designed using racing yacht technology. It was built in a shipyard in Falmouth and then driven up to London in 26 sections. And, apparently, if London were to have a flood, it would float, which is nice. The media centre is truly unique, the only semi-monocoque building in the world. It was designed by architects Future Systems and finished in 1999, just in time for the World Cup, in fact. It's been compared to a radio alarm clock, um, a supermarket barcode reader, and uh, most unkindly of all, to Sherry Blair's mouth. It's very unkind. Inside, it's something like out of the Jetsons. It's a very 50s vision of what the future might look like. Now, on match days, this place is completely packed. This room holds about 120 print journalists. Cunningly concealed in the desks are your uh, computer terminals, phone lines and PowerPoints. Plus, you get your own personal air nozzle. Apparently, the architects modelled the interior on a 1957 Ford Thunderbird. So you have this rather lovely powder blue carpet, which goes halfway up the wall, which then changes to this punctured suede, just like the ceiling of a car. Well, having done cricket commentary in the past, this building's absolutely perfect for the job. There's a great view, and you're just behind the bowler's arm, which is ideal. The glass here slopes forward so that the commentators aren't bothered by reflections, but more importantly, so that the batsman isn't dazzled by the glare. Because the building is so high, some of the commentators complained they felt detached from the game, so the designers installed speakers so you can pull up the noise level from outside. Everyone was happy with this, apparently, except Test Match Special, who demanded the architects punch a hole in the window so that they could dangle a microphone out of it. Because, well, that's the way they've always done things. I guess what I like most about this building is that it's the opposite of that tradition for tradition's sake kind of attitude. Uh, the architects could have gone for something bland that fitted in, but they haven't, and I think that's, that's really exciting. I also like the fact that it's right opposite the pavilion, which means all the old members of the MCC have to watch it all day. Like some kind of UFO that's landed on their ground. 